Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Rondi and we're in downtown Franklin, Tennessee at the Nashville British Car Club's annual car show. We're gonna go see some awesome British cars and hear some pretty cool stories behind them. Let's go. It's a 1958 XK 150. Bought in Orange County, California in 1964. Oh my goodness. The first week we were married. <gasps> We've had it ever since. Was your wife, did she just love it? Oh yeah, still does. It's been all over. It's been to Mexico and California and Las Vegas and Chicago and Tennessee. Oh my so, gosh. Do you drive it more or does your wife drive it more? No, she hasn't driven it since 1964 when she drove it with the emergency brake on. I never <laughs> let her drive it again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it is beautiful. The first week you were married. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Rodney. This is a 1952 Aston Martin DB2. Uh, saloon, which is a, a English for a enclosed car as opposed to an open car. Okay. They call them a saloon. This is one of 308 Aston Martin DB2s built. Very special car. We shipped the car when it was finished to California where it did the California Mill Amelia, which is a thousand mile event uh, that starts in San Francisco and goes up in the wine country How to the that? north. Great fun. Car did beautifully. Yeah, was Maiden it voyage. Did reliable, didn't break, wow. nothing broke. But uh, we hope to enter the car in the Italian Mille in uh, 2010, uh, if, if it's accepted. And uh, if so, we'll be shipping the car to Italy and, and hoping to do the Italian Mille Wow, that's amazing. Can you show us some of the special features? Well, this car has got a lot of special features and unique features. It's got uh, Barani wire wheels, which were, were an accessory at the time. The car didn't come with Barani wire wheels. Barani, of course, are Italian wire wheels. They're all uh, aluminum. They're very lightweight. Uh, the spokes are steel, but the brims are aluminum. So, a lot of uh, unique features to the car. Uh, I love the, the red car, interior. Yeah, the red interior was, was original. The car was originally maroon. Oh now, to God. show you how weird the English are, <laughs> well, no offense, but they had a maroon, the car was maroon with a red interior piped in gray, which is a little bit of an odd color weird. combination for us, but the, the Brits always have a unique color oh combination. Oh my gosh, so that's the original. It is, the, a lot of the interior is original. Sure, it's a 1924 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost, and uh, it was originally the Paris show car in 1924 and an American bought it and he was over there for the uh, Paris Olympics and a son-in-law that was in the uh, rowing team on the US Olympic team wow. and they won the gold medal and they came home with the new Rolls Royce and I bought it about 10 years ago so wow 10 years ago now how much work have you put into it well cosmetically it was in pretty much the shape it is today and I've done a lot of mechanical work on it because one of the first things I did was to do a, a cross-country tour where we did 4,000 miles one way oh my God. in it, so to go out to Pebble Beach in 2004, and it was for the 100th anniversary of Rolls-Royce. We had about 20 Silver Ghost that uh, drove cross-country. We called it the uh, Sea to Sh Shining Sea Tour, and we started on the waterfront at Annapolis and then drove to uh, the golf course, of course, at Pebble Beach on the waterfront. Oh my gosh. Did you have any breakdowns or was it smooth sailing the whole way? Well, I did pretty well. I didn't have any major problems. I had one spoke break and I just put the spare wheel on and I had one uh, valve stick one day in Kansas. And, and these cars are relatively simple to work on. So you, you take, take the top, a little piece off the top and hammer the valve back down and had no more problems. All of it's pretty mechanical and this was the, so you can change the carburetor and from uh, uh, weak to strong. And, and this was to advance the ignition, and you do this on the fly. And this was, this car is so old that it's before a lot of that, which would have been automated in a car even probably five years newer. And then a governor, and this sort of the equivalent of a speed and cruise control, up to about 40 miles an hour, you can take this thing and set it, and over hill, dale, it'll pretty much stay within a few miles an hour. It's pretty wow. amazing. That's awesome. Anything else you want to add about the car? We won't show you the GPS, okay? <laughs> well, the MG was originally sold in England back in 1947 as a racing car, so when it was first brought from the company, they bored it out to a 1500cc engine, so that's not a typical one for a TC. So we've had this for... About a year. About a year, so we've been cleaning it up and... Preserving it for preserving. the future. How much work have you had done to it? I've had mostly chrome work done on it. For How fast does it go? Uh, so it, it, the speedometer doesn't work on it. It goes faster than it stops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I 
it, I came up and it, to a light one time and it changed, so I tried to stop and I'm doing the little fishtail thing. It's like, oh yeah, that's right, this is not modern technology. <laughs> that's right. Oh, and the other unique thing in this car is the body is all wood in construction with wrapped in metal. Okay. So it's uh, somewhat unique in the older cars that they're, they're a wood infrastructure. Yeah, this oh, is a good great. side. Okay, you can look at that side. <laughs> <laughs> so whose car is this? Tell us the real story about who, whose it is. Well, because we have two T cars and a Triumph here, um, I, I took over the MGs and he's got the Triumph, so it's my car. And I get it was the Corvette, too. And he's got a Corvette, so, you know. Not a bad deal. Yeah. Somehow, I deal. think he made out on horsepower, though. Yeah. All of our cars don't equal my horsepower. <laughs> well, it is a fairly rare vehicle. They only made the uh, Austin A40 Somerset 52 through about half of 54. Uh, we know of only two others besides this one in the United States. Uh, it's actually my wife's car bought it off the internet and even being in a restoration business it's very easy to get fooled because the pictures showed that it was a gorgeous car and i asked all the right questions drove 850 miles to pick it up had already paid for it and i leaned against the car knowing it was it and asked the owner uh, where's the car that i actually bought because it was nothing like they said it was or the picture showed there's the proud owner right there <gasps> she had on the hair oh. <laughs> you have it we, we, but you chose the colors yes yeah. i love it well i didn't really get to choose them it was kind of an agreement it was um, yes i was given like three three <laughs> shades of blue and two shades of silver you can choose any of these i love it it looks so pretty well it's gonna look better when he puts my big pink ribbons on it for breast cancer awareness. yes yes I haven't shared that with you, have I? No, we'll, we'll <laughs> so we put air conditioning in it, and the air conditioning is actually period correct for, you know, when air conditioning first came out on the cars, it mounts under the dash. Because, you know, if Mama's not happy, Ain't none of us happy. are happy. So Mama needed air conditioning to drive well, a, a closed car. Well, it's an MG called an MG PA Airline Coupe. And the airline coupe was the, the rare thing. Well, it's uh, one of only 28 that were built. So it's a very rare car. Uh, back in 1934, uh, 35. And today there are only about 10 of them still lit in existence. There are only five in the States. There's three in England, one in Europe, one in Australia. That makes the 10. Oh my goodness. Uh, it came from England and if you see this little thing here. Oh yeah. That's that's it was found in a junkyard around 1970 in England. I, I've owned it since January of 2003. One of the special features is this little uh, sunroof on the top. Yeah, that's a lot of it opens and closes, and also the uh, opening, the, the uh, front windshield can be opened up which is nice in warm weather. Yeah. If you're driving it, that, the air coming under this yeah. thing is just like air conditioning. <laughs> These, uh, the turn signals, uh, they call them trafficators in England. And here's how they work. Oh, <laughs> pretty nifty. So that's how they work. Uh, what always tickled me was that the GIs over in England during World War II and after they saw these things, and they called them idiot sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Which I tend to agree with. But, uh, and I like them because they look pretty. Yeah, yeah. In fact, wow. everything about this, I like because of the beauty of it. I don't, I don't like, I don't have any practical uh, liking for it. I just love to look at it. Okay. Okay, that brings us down to best of show. It is presented to Don Caldwell, 1935 Airline Coupe. Airline Coupe is considered by many of the MG folks as the most beautiful MG that was ever produced. I'll take you riding in my car car, take you riding in my car car, take you riding in my car car, riding in my car. Boys and girls sing a little song Boys and girls you sing a little song Boys and girls sing a little song When you're riding in my car The horn goes beep beep 